Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can all hear me okay. Welcome live and direct from my kitchen. I guess this is going to be the new normal. We'll just give it another minute or so if you want to join the meeting. That's two o'clock, okay? So just another catch up like we've done on the previous sessions. I don't think this will be a super long one. I think we've probably all got our minds on other things just at the moment, but let's carry on regardless. So today's agenda, as per the screen, I guess as many meetings nowadays, top of the agenda will be coronavirus, but we won't spend too long on that. Then we'll have a quick recap on the release schedule, uh, some a review of some of the key documents, then we'll just quickly talk about integration testing and then finish with, as I mentioned last time, some chat about what happens if uh, there is downtime, there is disconnectivity between ourselves and Street Manager or Street Manager itself is down. Then we'll just do a reminder of next steps and then Q&A, which will pick up any chat from that we've gone along with. If not, I'll just unmute you all and you can do a free format chat. So, as I said, we'll start with coronavirus. We, we briefly mentioned this last time, but just some of you may have heard from your account manager already, but just to say our status at the moment, we have no reported cases. We have no significant staff absence at the moment, but we have enacted our emergency remote working policy in place. So uh, a significant number of the staff, our staff are now working from home or from wherever uh, they call home. We've kept skeleton staff in uh, each of the key offices, the, the support office and in the head office in Cannington to answer the phones. Obviously that may change if uh, government policy changes later, but we've just got a few, a few there at the moment. But despite that, all staff can be contacted via email or Slack or whatever means you have usually to get hold of them. Uh, your, your account manager may have provided you a direct number or some means of contacting, contacting them. Uh, there is a support number for absolute emergencies, a mobile number, that's really for priority one system totally down, otherwise uh, use the normal channels and email support. You'll be able to phone, phone support, but there's, there's a, just a limited set of staff there at the moment. We will be do, using internal meetings using Skype and Teams and external meetings like today using Skype, Teams, Zoom or whatever your preference. So uh, we'll generally be avoiding sort of on-site visits as much as possible until circumstances change, as I'm sure it's the same with yourself. It'd be useful to uh, let us know what your plans are as far as uh, the coronavirus. If you are working from home, those sort of things, let your account manager know so we know how to contact you and what the situation is with your audience. Otherwise, we're trying as much as possible to attempt business as usual, carry on providing service that you've paid for and you would come to expect, except for many of us, we have a slightly shorter commute each day. As just was asked on the chat, um, there has been a communication from the Street Manager Governance Group on Monday to the DFT asking about a delay to Street Manager. Uh, that's the full glory of the letter. I'm sure everyone has probably seen it as I think it's been widely circulated, but if they haven't, slides afterwards which makes it uh, a fairly impassioned plea that it's not so much about the software about but the sort of manpower that's available to support the transition for each uh, organization if you haven't been on slack then that got raised on slack as well uh, five or six comments on there uh, a holding comment from paul on uh, yesterday i think it was monday and then a comment from Sally this morning to say that she'll get back to us, but they need to speak to the ministers and we expect something in the next 24 hours. So that's the position as far as the DFT is concerned. As far as we're concerned, okay, I'm just getting a couple of comments about not being able to hear. I might try and switch over to the, the headset, so you bear with me for a moment. I'll see if that's any better for you. Bear with 
Right, I'm hopefully on the headset. Is that any better? Someone can chat to say if they can hear me better now. That'd be good. Good. Right. <laughs> Lots of yeses. Brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. So um, we're, we're working on the basis that we still have to work for the 1st of April until such time as we hear from the DFT. Uh, I have no idea which way they're going to go, whether they'll go the whole hog or whether they will just still implement it, but perhaps relax the rules on FPNs. So we still have to work towards the 1st of April. If it's delayed, then we will just carry on with Eton until such time as the new, the new deadline. Uh, give us more time to catch up with some of the issues, give DFT more time to fix things and give more time for the API to settle down into a perhaps less agile situation. So there may be some benefits to it in the sense of calming the whole project down and giving people perhaps the, the time they need for it. But just to confirm our release strategy, unless we hear otherwise, we released production, production release one at uh, the beginning of last week, and some people are using that for locally hosted upgrades. We upgraded some people on the managed service, the early adopters. Beginning of this week, there's a new release available on Symposium, also being used this week for managed service upgrades, and we're planning to upgrade the whole of the managed service estate onto that release this week. And then production release three, which is due right at the end of the month. That's the uh, one right just in time release, which will be then upgraded onto the managed service over that weekend. And obviously available for you are, if you are locally hosted. There are no Insight mobile changes planned, no web service changes. Any updates to the software will only be to fix anything we find between the 16th and the 27th. So if we're asking about the implications, if they did put back the 1st of April, then we would probably not need to do this release because this is the just-in-time release to get the latest, greatest version of Insight in just-in-time. If it goes back a number of weeks, we will probably still take the same approach of having a production release free, again, just-in-time. So we will just, it will just be putting it off for a few weeks or maybe longer. The DFT's release strategy, just to remind you, is a release to Sandbox just before go live and then a release to production literally the day before go live and then another release later that week, Sandbox and production, obviously to take into account any last minute things that didn't get in place. And just a reminder that we've got a, a Slack channel, direct support mechanism with the, with the DFT developers from the 1st of April onwards so we can escalate issues with them. Just a reminder of the documentation that's on Symposium that's been updated this morning with uh, updates we've made in the last week or so. There was a change to the Eaton transaction mapping. That was a minor correction. Today's slides are on there and the user interface change document has been updated. So I had highlighted in there in yellow some of the things that were planned to be in the user interface but weren't in there just yet. With the release this week, we've taken out some of the yellows so that things that are now in the interface are not marked as yellow. The two documents that are really interesting that we're going to go through today are the troubleshooting document and the production release status document. So this is the um, release status document. Uh, that's the, the first page. I will bring it up, the PDF, and just bring that across. You should be able to see that. Hopefully, make that a bit smaller. I'm not going to go through this line by line. You can read through it afterwards. But just to tell you the purpose of this document is to really give you the position of this release for the integration uh, at a high level. So at the first page, we're going to go, go through issues where further Symology development or testing is required. And in particular, those which are late, waiting for street manager of something. So these are the things that street manager have either not finished off or they've finished off so recently that we haven't had chance to uh, develop it yet. We'll come back to those in a minute. Then we've got known errors, things we know about in the system already that you are likely to hit. We're not listing every single internal thing we know about, but things you as users might see when you're using the system. 
that's a relatively short list at the moment because we've we've caught up with a lot of the bugs that have been reported during integration testing i'm sure over the next couple of weeks you probably might find some more bugs and we'll update that as appropriately and then it moves on to missing features which are the things which we haven't done yet so most of these are post the first of april things that uh, there just isn't time to do a few of them might sneak in just just before the first of april and then at the end of the document there's a list of things which are not in scope for street manager integration things that we are not planning to do in the in the short term and then some of the things that are out of scope for street manager which tend to be the things you obviously hit straight away uh, so we just put a reminder there that unattributable works is not part of street manager um, you can record them locally uh, it did at one point crash trying to send call street manager we fix that now so those things are um, not going to go to street manager so that's just a, a very quick reference guide there at the end on things that you don't need to call us about for street manager integration because they just don't they don't do it so going back to the just the beginning i'll try and pick out a few bits of uh, that you might be really interested in um, contractor organizations the DFT are just having some issues sorting out the roles for contractor users we've got we've got a few of them working now some of them are sending across and we're trying to sort out getting the receives but that's very much on a case-by-case -case basis so if you're a, a contractor you will need to make sure that you are set up for all the organizations you work for you're set up with access to all those work streams uh, you really need to get it all right before you start using the integration so sort that out have a chat with your account manager if you're having trouble with it and they can guide you on that and when you've got it all sorted out you should be ready to test we're sending section 58 road restrictions we can't get them down yet um, we have now got the facility to call that from uh, from street manager we need to write the code now so that's going to be next month so we can bring those uh, restrictions down a completely new one that came up the last time I was at the DFT last week uh, before the lockdown started was that they're providing a new facility for us on multi-status streets, so a part private, part public street that we can actually pass in which half of the street it's on other than just the geometry. We can say it's on the private half, on the public half. And likewise, we'll be able to get out whether it's on the public half or the private half. At the moment, it just uses the first one which i think will always be when we're sending we'll always pick the public side which is not an issue as of today because the public streets are not in street manager sorry the private streets are not in street manager when receiving things down from street manager we will use the geometry and where that's located to pick the public or private ownership which will be reasonably reliable but obviously at a later date we'll, we'll try and use the one that comes from street manager and as I just mentioned, one issue there is the street manager gazetteer, I don't think has been updated to include all of the uh, private streets and remote footpaths, those sort of things. It's due to be done before go live. I'm expecting them to post on Slack when it's done. So a number of you will still get, uh, I think it's a 404 error uh, for, which effectively means that USRN is not on file. And then the known errors, which I think we're down to fairly specific isolated cases and um, not ones which are going to be showstoppers or uh, major issues but I'm hoping we get all those addressed before the go live date there are a number of things related to defective apparatus because that was a very last minute thing we've got the main life cycle in there for defective apparatus but a few things are still not quite finished Then moving on to the missing features, um, these top two, certainly the second one, the second one has now been done. So many of you have perhaps encountered the case where a transaction is rejected because the organization and district it's on doesn't exist on file. That's happening quite a lot at the moment for two reasons. One, we're using your test systems, which are not, uh, not necessarily set up with all the correct organizations and districts. And also some organizations are setting up Workstream specifically for street manager testing, which won't be in your local system. So at the moment they're being rejected. 
we have got a change in development. It's, it's been done, so it's waiting. It will come out with production release free. So when you receive a transaction for an organization or district that doesn't exist, it will create it for you on the fly and the transaction won't be rejected. We won't know the name of that organization or that district, so we'll just give it a name based on the number. So if it's organization 5000 comes in, we'll call it organization 5000. If it's district 27, we'll call it district 27 you'll be able to go to your operational district screen and just tweak the name according to uh, who, who it is. Who it is. Um, a question just came in on um, the chat about section 58, so just scrolling back a bit, is uh, about bringing them down, but also when we send them up, how are they created? They're created as activities rather than as permits when you send it to two Street Manager. Originally, Street Manager, you could create it as a permit or an activity. The DFT have now said it should be an activity. I think the facility to create it as a permit is still available, but we're, we're not using that approach. We're using the activity approach. When it comes down from Street Manager into the Works Promoter System, it will come down and look like a Section 58 would in, would in Eaton as a, as a proper works. There should be no difference there. As they are done as activities, there is a fairly limited life cycle, fairly limited transactions. You can send them, you can update them, you can cancel them. There's not a lot else you can do. There's not really much of a life cycle. They are basic. Some of the things you would have done in Eaton, which you can't do now, uh, things like adding attachments to them. You can add attachments to activities. Those are things we try and mention the troubleshooting. So that if you say, where's my activity gone on a Section 58 will say, well, no, they're not part of Street Manager integration. Um, so going back to that list of missing features, a few of the ones at the top will, will sneak in for, for Go Live. Others will be done during April, in particular, the sending inspections and FPNs to Street Manager on historic works will need to be done before the end of April. So we'll do a, another release before the end of April that includes that and some of these other things as well. So that's what I wanted to highlight just on that document. It's worth a read through. So we manage your expectations about what's in, what's not in, and bugs. And obviously you can use that as a triaging that if you find problems in the system, check there first. If it's in there, then it's expected. You don't need to notify us. We already know about it. If it's not in there, post it on Slack, we'll take a look at it for you. Okay, I'm just gonna move on now to the, the troubleshooting document. Hopefully some of you have had a look at this, but this is both for internal and external use. This is gonna be our go-to guide for our support team, but will make it available to yourselves as well. So it's your go-to guide when you get an issue, when you get an error, uh, check here to see what the issue might be. So we start off with connectivity issues and sending. If something goes wrong, these are the steps to go through. And if something goes wrong receiving, these are the steps you can go through first before calling us. At the end of the day, if it doesn't work, the last step is always call the help desk, but there are things you can do first to check that it's happening. So if you're not getting any transactions down at eight o'clock in the evening, that's because our batch processes only work from eight till six on the managed service. In the locally hosted system, that may be different. Uh, so you either wait to the morning or speak to your IT team about the frequency of operation. So you can check there, check the view batch interface detail screen. So that's where you would see that a works has been rejected and that's why it's not appearing in your system. I'll just pause for a moment because I had a, a question about the uh, Highways Act permits I said were listed being out of scope. By Highways Act permits, I mean things really created from the licenses and events modules. So skips, scaffolds, uh, hoarding. When you record them in licenses, you can push them into the Insight Streetworks module and they're recorded as a Highways Act permit for local coordination. At the moment, we're not sending those up to Street Manager because they're only needed for your own local coordination purposes that's not a never we're not never going to do that but as they're not particularly high priority at the moment we're focusing on some of the other things to get right first of all 
So again, just skimming through the troubleshooting, we've summarized a few of the transactions which are not sent to Street Manager and therefore uh, in instant triage. And then I've listed a whole load of things in red messages, which are the message you will get back from Street Manager, perhaps when you uh, create a permit. So if you create a permit, you'll get location types must be supplied. Basically means one of those five surface location types must be ticked. And so we go through a number of the Street Manager error messages and give you a, 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 an idea of what the likely cause is going to be. Hopefully that will answer your question. If it doesn't, then you call the support team. So there's the request failed with status code 404, which is what we got get back from Street Manager. Usually means the SR, USRN you are creating it on doesn't exist. Doesn't necessarily mean that. So check that first. And if that's not the case, then contact us. So we go through those. The ones in bold and black are sort of FAQs rather than street manager issues. Why has my project description not been sent to street manager? Because project description doesn't exist as a field within street manager. So we could send it, but there's nowhere for it to go. And so it goes through updating works, progressing works, permit responses, and so on and so forth. So it's worth having a good read through that. If you have questions that are not in there, please let us know on Slack and we can add them to the troubleshooting guide. As you ask us questions on Slack, we, we check the guide uh, first. So it's, it's starting to build up into quite a useful resource. Uh, I've just had a question about the, where the troubleshooting guide is stored. So they're all on the symposium area. So if we go back a couple of slides to, to there. This is the symposium area of the Somology website. So you go to the Somology website, go to the customer section, log in there, and I think you go to the user group section. And that's where the street manager documentation is at the moment. So it's about three or four different sections and they're all there for you to access. So we'll just get rid of the troubleshooting guide and go back to the slides. So it's just a, a quick whistle stop tour of a couple of really important documents. Just going back to integration testing, just really keep going. Uh, it, as I said before, it's now getting more and more important because the software is more stable and uh, hopefully we're nearer to 100% correct. And more than likely, if you get an issue now, it's a good chance it might not be something we know about. So if you get an issue, check the troubleshooting, troubleshooting check the release status. If it's not in either of those, then please let us know on Slack. It's worth noting in reality, assuming we are first of April, go ahead, then there isn't much time to make changes now. But it is still important to report them still. Because if you report it, we can assess the implications of it, identify the exact circumstances in which it occurs, identify, okay, it's, it's that date, it's that value, it's that field that you put in. If you don't do that, you can get around it. So we can investigate workarounds, we can document it in the troubleshooting, and most importantly, share the knowledge. So if you get a problem, we can let everyone else know. And if they get a problem, we can let you know. So it's it's help, help us to help you, really. So it's still important, and we can really build up that troubleshooting guide in the next few weeks. And I want to finish today, uh, not so much on a happy note, but just a, uh, a general topic of, of downtime, is sort of what happens when it all goes horribly wrong. Uh, for those of you who've been testing this morning, uh, you'll have noticed that the our connection to Street Manager is not working this morning. That wasn't a deliberate ploy to give us material for today. We are having some technical issues at the moment. They are ongoing as we speak. Uh, we had a, I thought they were fixed just after lunch. Uh, we just before lunch we, we rebooted everything and it seemed to work okay for a bit but now it's uh, still uh, still not working so but really I want to go through what happens if that happens just a word about today it's ongoing our techies are still looking at it obviously if this was the live and production environment there would be perhaps a uh, we would have it res resolved by now uh, we would have everyone in the company trying to sort it out because it's still a test environment, we're trying to go through that very carefully and slowly and rather than just 
uh, reboot everything in sight and hope it works. We're trying to sort of uh, diagnose and try and find the exact cause of the problem and try and find things out. But if it was uh, a live situation, we might be a little bit more um, um, blunt with our means of fixing things. So really what I want to talk about was happen, what happens if the connection street manager is down and the two scenarios, the UI being down uh, and the API being down, you know, street manager is down completely. Or if as this morning is the case, our connection to the API is down, but street manager UI is still available. Whichever those two scenarios, there's three important things to do. First, contact us. We may not know about it, so let us know. Secondly, don't panic. We'll try and get it sorted. The thirdly, give it some time. Um, techies, both ends, our end, their end, should be able to fix things. So have a cup of tea, have a fig roll, and we'll both work on it. If the street manage itself is completely down, you will probably get a message, something similar to the following, a, a timeout calling the DFT street manager, uh, 1376. Something fairly fundamental, we can't call street manager. So what happens then is um, you have a couple of options really. The, the option that I pushed and sort of uh, demonstrated in the seminars before Christmas, and I mentioned this last week, is it could be put onto the queue. And so therefore when the uh, street manager is back up, it will automatically retry that transaction. But it's worth noting, I'm not sure everyone quite realized that the date and timestamp of that committing that transaction to street manager will be the retry date and time, not the original posting date and time. If we try and send a, a, a permit grant at four o'clock and street manager is down, if we don't get to charge, do it until five o'clock, the date and time of that grant will be five o'clock. Street manager doesn't allow us, uh, allow you the opportunity to honor the time you try to send it. If it goes into street manager at five o'clock, that's the date and time. Obviously that's an issue for time sensitive transactions like grants, starts and stops. At the moment we're thinking that transaction queuing, whilst, whilst it's very nice, it's very useful for non-sensitive, time sensitive transactions like recording comments and most of sort of re registrations and most of S inspections and FPNs. For those time sensitive ones, it's not ideal because you don't know whether it's gone or not, it's in the queue waiting to go on. So we're thinking, We've got the capability in there, but we will leave it turned off with a configuration to turn it on on a site by site basis if you really want it. So if street manager is completely down, you just won't be able to record any of those transactions. But at least you know what's gone, what's not gone. We've raised the question with the DFT about what the legal position is on doing a start, stop, grant if street manager is down. Uh, it's, it's not clear. We haven't had an answer from Paul Chandler. You might like to answer the same question to the DFT as to whether you can charge for a grant that you tried at four o'clock but weren't able to commit. The only thing we'd say is we, as a fallback, uh, as an alternative to transaction queuing is, say if you wanted to record a start at today, lunchtime today, 10 past 12, you could record a comment in your local system which will record the actual date and time you did it and the date and time you attempted it and you can record have a, a report which you could email to the authority and vice versa as an authority you could grant it and produce reports show what time you granted it and email that to the works promoter whether that has any legal standing I don't know but certainly in dealing with FPNs if you can demonstrate uh, what you did and at what time that may well help your case if the Smology connection is down, but the street manager user interface is up okay, again, you'll get the same message. Again, first thing to do is wait. Hopefully we can fix it. So, but do contact us, keep calm, have a cup of tea, and our techies will try and do the best we can to fix it. If it's still not up and you're getting close to half past four and you're a highway authority, or it's not up and you're getting close to your two hour deadline for start stops and the potential FPNs, you do have the fallback of entering that transaction using the street manager user interface. You can go in and just sort of quarter past four, put in all your grants, or within two hours, enter your starts and stops to make sure they are recorded on time. 
it is worthwhile from a business continuity perspective making sure you have a few people in your organization with street manager logins and they know how to do that for those specific transactions we're not recommending it for non-time sensitive transactions sending your registrations uh, inspections and fpns you can probably just wait until it comes back up when the connection comes back up those transactions that you entered into the street manager user interface will come back down into insight okay so it will play catch up and bring them all down we pick up all transactions that are relevant to your organization we just exclude any that we've sent up ourselves so any you enter as a user via the user interface with your own logins will bring back down so if the next morning we pick up a grant the event history date and time will be now as in nine o'clock next morning the notice issued date and time will be the date and time logged into street manager and that will be used for the process so if that said the grant was at 4 15 that will come in and grant the grant the works generate the permit charge even if it's not received until the next day so it will play catch up and that's really all i want to say on the uh, um downtime and really the sort of business continuity side of things just a reminder before we finish off with uh, questions to make sure you get your API details sorted out as soon as possible. We really are running out of time, both sandbox and production and getting those work stream permissions for contractors, making sure you're added as a contractor to the relevant system for organizations, adding relevant contractors as you need them. Get your own ODs correct in production. Make sure you don't have accidentally anybody else logged, uh, set up and plan your user training and familiarization. And otherwise we're gonna finish with Q&A. While you think of some questions to ask, uh, then I will just go through a couple of the ones on the chat. So uh, someone, someone just uh, asked about the troubleshooting and the release status that are on Symposium that we went through earlier. So Smology website, customers, symposium, go to the user group folder, the documents are all listed there. The two that are in the slides are the two that are most relevant at the moment, which is the release status, as in all the things we've done and not done, and the troubleshooting, which gives you your sort of first port of call for any questions. We've had another question about how you want to be how we want to be notified of downtime. Once we're in production, then via a case call the support team um, either phone them or email them and that will raise a case on your behalf and then we'll get straight on to that okay i haven't got any more questions on slack sorry on the chat so i will unmute people um, you might then want to mute yourself straight away if you don't have any questions so we don't get any background noise but feel free to chuck out any questions i've got one more just on chat coming through about one about the mobile device management software being released in live are we expecting any issues doing the update like we had in the test area um no uh, i hope not anyway one of the problems we've had over the last month or two particularly the mobiles is is the agile nature of street manager is changing very very rapidly we've we've not had the chance to plan this out in advance and say right this is when we'll have it done by this date and we get it all ready for that date we've had to pretty much get it ready for fixed dates and it has to be done by that date whether we're ready or not with whatever features we've got so um, most of our focus has been on the um, the aspects of the street manager integration itself the mobile devices we weren't planning to change too much we ended up doing some technical changes to the sql server database because of product compatibility and security it needs to be updated to the later version that had just a bigger much bigger knock-on effect than we were expecting so we hadn't allocated a huge amount of time to the, the development we needed a lot more so all i can say is sorry on that that wasn't intentional not expecting it on live uh going right back to the beginning uh just for some late comers we had just some questions about coronavirus and the delay just to just to repeat that the governance group have requested a delay we are waiting for the dft for paul and sally to come back to us 
on that. Uh, another question is on the mobile devices about whether they need to be directly connected to the network to do the download. I think we would always recommend um, you are connected to a good signal. I don't think you probably need to be connected to your corporate network, but that will depend on your own IT, your own devices and what policies you have in place. Um, from our perspective, the main thing is you want a good Wi-Fi connection. You don't want to be downloading a new version of the software over uh, 3G, 3.5G. Mr. Any Burton's just asking questions? about the UAT testing tomorrow. Sorry. I've, I've asked coming to remotely. Sorry, can you say that again? You were very quiet coming through my uh, uh, laptop speakers rather than my headset. Hello, perhaps you can put it in the chat because I can't hear you very well. I uh, just while you're typing that in, I've had another question of uh, uh, are the Section 58 restrictions being set up on GM wraps as before? Um, well, basically, you start with your, your current Insight authority system with all the Section 58 as it was uh, and as it is. Um, none of those will be on Street Manager when we start up. It's then up to you as far as how much you want to put in Street Manager. We'd recommend putting all the proposed, as in not enforced ones, up to street manager which just involves going through each one and cancelling it and resurrecting it you can also put the in progress ones if you want to but that obviously makes the job even bigger we're working on the basis that the uh in force ones have already been legally served and they're already in your system from a perspective of uh, uh coordination and they're probably already in each promoter system for however they're doing the coordination I had a question about a, a statutory undertaker using the API to set their contractor up. You don't need to do anything in Insight. Um, this is if, if we're talking about a contractor who is, has their own system. They are using Street Manager as an independent organization or using as their own separate Insight. If they are just logging onto your system, you just carry on as you are. They, you can sort of feel them as being subcontractors. They are a member of your team. If they are working for you, as, but as a different organization, you need to go into the Street Manager user interface as an admin user. You need to add their organization and add them so they can do work on your behalf. You then need to define what work streams they can use and add those work streams to their API user. So they will have an SM API user um, about, uh, and you need to add it to, the, to that uh, Synology API user, the same as yours. Hi, Mike. It's John Peel. Can you hear me all right? Um, no, you're very, very quiet. Let me just try and see if I can turn you up. Can you hear me all right now? I'll have another go. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, if you, you might, if you talk as loud as you can, I can just about hear you. I am, I'm trying to talk into, as close as I can to the laptop as well. Um, regarding the 16, Section 58 and the, the restrictions, what we used to do was set them up originally like the proposed in our local system, but then we went into JM Wraps 